Hey everybody, it's me, it's Undead Viking. I'm coming to you today with another video review. Uh, today's game is called Codename Oracle, and this game is just freshly in the Kickstarter program, I believe. Um, Codename Oracle, uh, thematically, is a game of mind reading. It pits two people, one against each other. Uh, one person as a KGB mentalist, and the other person as a CIA... Uh, psychic, and uh, they are combating against each other, trying to uh, discern each country's launch codes from each other. Now, uh, this is a game of you, 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 when I show you the game, you're going to be like, "Hey, I know what game this is. This this game is Memory." Well, yeah, it's kind of Memory. Like, you know, by Memory, I mean like all those card games. You, you, if you have kids, you played that with them, or you probably maybe even did it yourself by just taking a deck of cards and putting the cards out in a big giant pile in front of you and you draw two and try to find matches. And that's part of this game, but uh, that's a real basic mechanic and, and there's so much more to this game and I'll show that to you in just, in just a brief moment. But uh, this game uh, uses uh, classic Zenner cards. Uh, for those of you that um, remember the great, great uh, movie um, Ghostbusters, the game Bill Murray is testing those two uh, students and asking them, what do you see here? And he's holding it up and then they're getting electric shocks if they don't guess, you know, the, is it a few wavy lines, you know? And, and so these are the classic cards where you're trying to like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of the card, now I'll read my mind, what am I thinking of? And, uh, and I, I like that. It's kind of a cool little thing. And, and it's cool that, uh, the designer, um, Brent Cunningham, uh, made a game kind of based uh, with this these these types of cards um, basically what it is it's 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 both players playing against each other trying to outguess the other person and trying ultimately either to um, figure out their own tableau of cards uh, that'll allow them uh, to discern uh, the five card combination that each player picks uh, before the game starts. Kind of like if you remember Mastermind. Well, everybody knows what Mastermind is, where you pick the little colored pegs and then the game begins and you start making guesses. In this game, you can't really make guesses right away. Um, you have to kind of, you know, feel out your opponent. You have to set up defenses, psychic defenses. You have to set up psychic attacks. You have to, and also uh, you have to set up your psychic focuses. And all that stuff is not things I'm going to explain uh, very, very shortly. But um, it's a very intriguing game. Um, it's it's a lot of fun. It it uh, can get very. Uh, 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 brain burning, if you will, uh, if your memory uh, isn't isn't the greatest. Uh, mine sometimes is and sometimes isn't. Uh, but um, I found it a lot of fun to play with my wife, and she enjoyed it a great deal, probably because she beat me a lot at it. But um, I'm going to show you, as I always do, uh, how to play the game. It won't take long at all. Uh, this game is, is very quick uh, to learn and play, um, and you can set it up in about five minutes. And, uh, and then I'm going to tell you exactly... Uh, what I think of it, as I always do, and then somewhere along the way you can figure out if this is something that uh, you want to back so uh, you can uh, uh, get this one on your table. I do apologize, I, I know I said Brent Cunningham was the designer, he was a, a big play tester and he's the publisher of, of this game because he's the publisher of Wishing Tree Games, but it's actually Andrew J. Clark. I do apologize. I didn't know that, I just had a, a brain fart there. But uh, So Mr. Clark, I do apologize. This is an excellent game. Thank you very much for sending it to me. So. Uh, well, actually, I should thank Brent. But anyway, never mind. Um, all right. Well, let me let me show you how to play, as I always do, and then uh, then I'll tell you exactly uh, what I think of the game, and then uh, that'll be that. Then. All right. Here we go. What card am I thinking of? Square. Right, anyway. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, what you see here in front of you is the extent of the components that comes with the game Codename Oracle. And as always, as I do for uh, uh, prototype versions of games that I get, this is, as I said, a prototype version. And so the components that are actually going to be in the published version may be different than what you see here. Uh, the Obviously this is the CAA and this is the KGB, and each one gets an, a deck of the Zenner cards that I showed you in the introduction, and they're exactly the same. Um, you'll notice that here's your hit point bar over here. When you take damage from psychic attacks, you will move this down or up when you heal. 
and down and up when you heal, obviously. If you ever reach the skull on the bottom, your operative is killed and you lose the game. It is possible uh, to have uh, damage happen to both players at the same time, which would actually kill both players at the same time, in which case neither person would win. But that is one of the ways that you win the game, is uh, by killing the other person. Uh, and so then, you know, obviously, then you're the only one left and, you know, well, you, you can... Uh, continue on with your psychic administrations unfettered. Um, just uh, for the purposes of showing you how to play the game, I am going to uh, be a KGB agent, uh, mostly because I always dug the uh, Russian National Anthem whenever I played uh, the ice hockey game uh, with both USA and uh, the USSR. And do -do 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 -do. Okay, anyway, I'm um, just going to show you this really quickly. And um, there's a couple of things here that you, um, you notice that this says Strike, Focus, and Shield. Um, you'll, be, you'll be revealing cards during the game to do those three things. Having a Strike, uh, which is like your Psychic Attacks. A Focus, which um, has varying effects depending on which symbol is used. And a Shield, which will defend you against the psychic, psychic attacks. Um, you'll notice that the five uh, different uh, Zenner card uh, is over here. And then so when you like say you do a strike but you do it with um, uh, pluses you would gain a life. If you did a focus with pluses uh, you'd gain three life. And then a shield, uh, when you discard the shield um, instead of drawing cards randomly, you get to choose cards from your hand and place them. So you can kind of uh, maintain knowledge of the cards that are in front of you. Now, I said cards are in front of me. I'll explain how this works. Well, the first thing you do uh, is you take this big deck of cards, and secretly you go through them, and you pick five cards. It'll be your launch code. And so I'll just, you know, take, uh, let's see here. A wavy line, a square, a star, another square, and a plus. So, and you do this secretively so they don't know. Uh, obviously, because this is your launch code, and you don't want the other player to know uh, what you have. And so you kind of look at these. And you decide. I mean, this is fine for for di for uh, demonstration purposes. This will work perfectly. And then you just uh, place these out like so. And so that is your launch code. And that's at the bottom of your of your pile. I'll just move those down just a little bit because I'm going to have to put a bunch more cards above them. And so uh, what happens is now uh, you have to deal out and form the rest of your table uh, with um, with randomly. You don't get to see these cards at all. So you're just dropping them down. So and you do you keep doing you're going to have a five by five square in front of you like so now remember with your launch code um you're not uh this is down here so these the the the, the top uh the cards the uh, three or uh, i'm sorry the four rows above that are the ones that you'll be messing with uh as the game goes on you'll still be altering these with three different actions and what have you but uh those for most part, uh, remain unrevealed because you're hiding them uh, from the opposing player because you don't want them to guess uh, what you have. So now you take the other cards and you're just going to put those off to the side because that's your draw deck. And then you draw your starting hand of five cards. And this is common knowledge as far as, you know, so this is your starting hand. And so I got a couple circles, a couple pluses, and a square. And now, uh, your other, the other player will do the exact same thing, and they should be, like, obviously across the table from you. And you will now begin, if you're, like, the first player, you now get to begin and start uh, with your actions. The actions you can take on your turn uh, can be done in any order, and you can choose not to do some of them, uh, but you only do them once each. And I'm just going to kind of explain how each one works. Now... First one's pretty easy. This is considered to be, um, remember, just so you know, this is considered to be your code row, where, where, your, where your launch code is, is. And this up here is considered, this four by five crit is considered to be your mind field. Notice the D, not a mind field, but a mind field. So, um, so when we refer to the mind field, we're referring to cards from here to there, and this is code row. 
regardless, one of the first things you can do uh, is is you know is look at any two cards you want. You don't show them to your opponent because you don't want them to know, and then you uh, put them back. You know, kind of like when you're playing uh, memory. So let's just take a look, and we'll say uh, here's a wavy line, here's a circle. Okay, so now we know where those are, so we have to remember those, circle and wavy line. Now, I'm, I'm betting I'll even forget that as we play the game. That's one thing you can do. And now, and that's to kind of get an idea of where the cards are, because um, the next thing you can do is you can swap the position of two cards in your mind field uh, without looking at them. So, what you could do, since you know what those are, and let's say you knew this was, a, you wanted to, because you want to try to get uh, cards with the same symbols close to each other to be able to do uh, your strikes, um, your shields, and your focuses. So, you know, let's, for whatever reason, let's say you knew this was another uh, wavy line. And so you know that's a wavy line. So what you want to do, and remember, you can't look at them, you would move them like so. And so now you got to remember, and I, like I said, Wavy line circle, wavy line circle. And so now you're trying to concentrate and remember where that is. Now, you can also, if you want, just discard a card without looking at it and and replace it with a card from your hand. And so remember, we know this is a circle now. So I want to get some circles together. So I'll just discard this without looking at it. Make sure you remember, you don't get to look at the card. You just place it there because since there is five of each type of these cards, you could easily, um, you know, try to uh, uh, count cards, if you will. And, and you still kind of can, but I don't. I, I, I can't remember those things. I have a tough time, like I said, circle, wavy line, circle. I have a tough time, tough time doing that way. But I know this is a circle, and I can place that there. So now I know that there's two circles there. And I can remember that, and hopefully now I'll be able to maybe get a circle there and wavy lines and what have you. So that's another one of the actions you can do. Another action you can do is you reveal a set uh, of cards and then and then you take the action or take the bonus that you get from it. Now, let's just say, I mean, I know this is a circle, so I'm revealing a set. And a strike is three cards in a column in your mind field. And so, Circle, circle, and like we can hope, this is another circle, no, it's a wavy line. So, I mean, that wouldn't work. But, let's, just for the sake of an argument, let's just say that it was a circle, like so. And now that's called a strike. Now, a strike is a psychic attack that attacks the other player. And so just, you draw kind of an imaginary line from here, because their, their cards will be set up like this. You draw an imaginary line, and you attack that column. And a strike will do one point of damage uh, to the player. So the first thing that happens is that, you know, the, if he didn't have a shield, and I'll explain shields in a moment, the nine would go down to an eight, and they'd mark that because they've taken a point of damage. And uh, the, then the player has to reveal the code card that matches up with the column that I just attacked. And so that's a way you get knowledge of the other person's cards. And so if you know I succeed in the attack, he then shows me that code card, and then I got to remember, okay, that card is a plus sign or whatever. And so then I can, you know, keep, put that little idea in my noggin, and hopefully he doesn't uh, get to change that card because there are certain effects that you can do that allow you to change those cards, and uh, and make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, since it was a circle, like you notice here. The circle is a strike. I can discard a card of my choice on the corresponding column and replace it with a card from the discard pile. Okay, so I mean that's not so what what that means is it isn't my column uh, that that gets replaced. It's my opponent's column. Um, what happens is that they will then need to discard a card from their mind field, remember not, not the Kodo, but from their mind field, they replace um, a single card of my choice uh, from their column on the other side, and then I get, you replace that with a card from their discard uh, of my choice as well, because the discards, once again, are blank. Now, what that means is, is that if the other player had been like jockeying cards around and I knew he'd been trying to set something up over there, I can pick a card that I think that they wanted, 
make them get rid of that and then replace it with something different. And that's kind of how you mess uh, with the other player. Now, since I've revealed uh, this, this set, I then now have to take that and I put that in my discard pile and I have to replace that with three fresh new cards, like so. And unfortunately now, I mean, I've got to start over trying to figure out what's over in that location. Uh, but, you know, at the very least, you know, I was able to, you have to, uh, you obviously have to do those actions because you can't win unless you're actually taking advantage of, of the cards you're setting up. Now, another thing that you can do, and let me just see if I can find a plus card, there we go, is you can do, set up a shield. And a shield is three cards of the same in a roll like this. Now, what this does, it protects these three columns from an attack from a strike. Now, unlike when you do a strike where you reveal the cards, you take your action immediately, the shield sits out there and it waits until it gets attacked. And once it is attacked, that is when you'll discard those cards out of the way. Um, also, at that point, it prevents the damage, it prevents you from having to show the card, and then you, once again, will have to replace them after it's attacked. But, um, as you can see, with the plus, like I said, the, the shield, it says, uh, when you discard the shield, like I said before, you replace it with cards from your hand. And so, in this case, if, you know, I have, uh, I have these, these, these cards in my hand at this time, two wavy lines or whatever. So, when I would, I get attacked, I defend myself, ha, you can't take me out. And then, you know, perhaps I, I know, okay, a square and a square and a wavy line. So I managed to put two squares next to each other and I know where those are. And, you know, and I can, and I can remember that the wavy line is there as well. And so and that's how a shield works. And you'll, a lot of times you'll have several shields uh, set up when you play the game. And it's always nice to have every single row preventing uh, being attacked by the other person. Um, and you're kind of, and because when the shields get uh, used up, sometimes they can actually do some cool things like, um, like a star shield uh, does damage to the person. So like, you know, so like, they'll have to attack it, you know, because they have to, even though they're going to take a point of damage when when they do it. Um, and so, you it's really nice when you have defenses set up that the other player begrudgingly has to knock down and have uh, effects happen to them or give you uh, bonus effects by, by allowing it to happen. Uh, the final set that you can reveal is a focus. And just my apologies here. Just need a couple of squares and then I'll... I'll be able to show you how a focus works. Um, a focus is going to be a two by two cube that you create uh, by with with a reveal. And so, if I remember correctly, I had a square, I had a square, and let's just take those two. And that is what's called a focus, having four cards in a two by two square. And when a focus is revealed, uh, you take the resulting action and you then you discard them and then replace them like you did with before, uh, like normally with cards from the uh, the deck. And the focuses all have kind of uh, different abilities and, and things like that. Um, I like the really good thing about uh, the focus with the square is that you get to replace a single card from your code row uh, with one from your hand, and then you discard the replaced card. So if somebody's guessed uh, and figured out what, what part of your code row is, when you reveal a square focus, then you get to replenish your code row and change it up a little bit um, to prevent the other player from being able to guess uh, what it is. And that's one of the ways that you can defend yourself. And then once again, um, after you've revealed it, you will take uh, those cards, if I can actually grab them, and put them in the discard, and then replace them. The fifth and final action you can take is you attempt to guess the other person's uh, uh, code, uh, launch code on the bottom. And perhaps you've learned a few of them. So let's, um, 
you know, for the sake of an argument, uh, so like, let's say, let, and you don't reveal them when you turn them over, but like you'll reveal them like, all right, this is my launch code, and you, you put it down like that. And so uh, you would, so the person says, okay, I know the first one's a square, I know the next one's a wavy line, and uh, it's a, a star, and then you're like, um, and then maybe they're just gonna flat out guess. And the thing is, is that you can just flat out guess and, and maybe you'll get lucky and, and, and figure it out. Um, but uh, for every incorrect guess that you make, you take a point of damage. And so you can say, is it a square? <gasps> it is a square. Then if you guess again, is it a plus sign? It is a plus sign. Oh, I figured out your launch code. You, I've destroyed you and you lose. And uh, and that's that's how one of the ways you win the game. Now, one of the other ways, as I said, you win the game is actually um, by uh, attacking your opponent well enough to get their hit points uh, down to zero, and then they die. And just because you take damage, remember if you make a strike uh, uh, with a plus sign, you gain a life, and in focus with uh, plus signs, you gain three. So you can heal yourself as the game is played. Uh, so um, that's uh, pretty much it. That's how you play. The only thing I didn't show you is that um, if this is your hand of cards and you have three, uh, you will take those three cards and you will draw up to five at the end of your turn. And so you will take the five cards and you'll have those in your hand and the other person does their turn and they do the same thing where they're, you know, they look at, you know, look at two cards, see what they are, remember a whole, you know, a couple of stars. You got to remember, um, those stars are there, and so you you take those two stars and you put them back down, and then you know, and then then they reveal and all. The, like I said, and remember you can do those actions in any order that you wish, um, and you you can even and you can choose not to do the actions as well if that if for whatever reason you don't want to do them, like say guessing what the other person's uh, launch code is because you don't want to take a bunch of damage. But there you go. Uh, that's how you play Codename Oracle. Uh, but let me tell you exactly uh, what I think about this uh, really cool two-player game. You ready to try this again? All right, here we go. Think. I'm looking at the card. It's a plus sign. If you didn't guess plus sign, uh, go lick a nine-volt battery. That's that's the. Uh, <laughs> Litmus test. Here, hold on. I'll do one for myself. Here, hold on. Ah, uh, think about the card. Totally think about it. Is it a circle? Oh, jeez. Anyway. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, what did I think of uh, Codename Oracle? As I said in in the introduction, I, I I really dug it, and my wife really dug it too. Um. It's it's so. Uh, in your face competitive uh, but kind of lighthearted at the same same time that um, uh, she and I were were really able to to enjoy it without there being any kind of a bad feeling between the two of us not that but my wife and I are very very competitive when it comes to games and and this is one of those that like uh, um, as far as remembering where your cards are and it's just like and then when you totally blow it and and you think and it's just like haha here's my strike and you like flip the th three cards over and you get to the third one and you know it's like ha star star wavy lines what <laughs> it's stuff like that um uh, i i really uh enjoyed the game um and it, it's it had a lot of great moments like that um, plus, you know, I mean, there's something to be said that, uh, you know, this game is, uh, it makes you focus. It makes you use your brain. And, uh, and, and it, it definitely, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to say it's like educational or anything like that. But, um, you know, it isn't, uh, I could see uh, kids as, as uh, you know, as, as young as 10 or 9 being able to kind of grasp the game and grasp the strategies. And, you know, it's, 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 it's a good, and uh, honestly, it's good for any of us to, uh, to tax our brains every once in a while and, and make us make us think instead of just kind of falling into that malaise. No, I'm not saying that like um, this is like you know doing the New York Times crossword puzzle or anything like that. But uh, there's something to be said about uh, a game that that really makes you kind of bend your brain a little bit. And plus, okay, I'm gonna say right now um, when I was younger, I was really into the whole paranormal thing, and I was I was really into. Uh, the possibility of there being extrasensory abilities that people had. And um, as I've gotten older, I've kind of uh, become more of a skeptic. 
And, uh, but sometimes, I mean, sometimes there's just moments in your life when you just have that deja vu feeling or something weird happens. And there's definitely a bit of a situation where, you know, you're just trying to read your opponent and, like, trying to... Because they know what their cards are. And so I'm not going to say that, you know actual mind reading happens during the game but it is weird there are times when i'm just sitting there thinking and it's just like i know it's a square you know and i just know that card's a square or i just know that you know that's that's what that's what's there and sometimes you're right now i realize it's just coincidence but it is kind of a, a goofy little feeling and it's kind of neat uh when it happens if you will uh you know i i really like um i really like the theme I like I like the Cold War theme. It seems like uh, there's been a lot of um, uh, games based in the Cold War lately um, that uh, are of this this genre uh, of this type. You know the espionage type of games. Um, you know I, I I like the fact that you have two ways of winning. You know you can, you can either get the launch codes or you can just you know if you do enough damage to the person. Um, I, I did find that uh, if you if you're if you're losing and you know you're losing. Um, that last ditch gambit uh, of just uh, guessing what the person has and then you know taking a point of damage each time. Um, don't ever try that if you're not really sure of the cards, so to speak, because uh, I, I remember I, I recently, like last game I played of this with Rebecca, I, um, I had to uh, just blindly guess at like two of the five cards and, uh, and not only did I for forget one, but I totally blew the other two and I ended up killing myself. But I had to do it, because otherwise I was going to lose. I knew I was going to lose. So, um, you know, uh, my my, uh, my mind-reading abilities failed me at that point. But um, I, I like, I, I just, everything about the game is just is just a lot of fun. I'm not a big two-player game player, just because I always have more people around. But this game fits uh, my wife and my uh, time and and uh, game gaming time perfectly, as far as... Uh, you know, the setup time, the learning time, and being able to play a game very, very quickly. So, yeah, if, if you're a fan of two-player games, and if um, and you have a an opponent that uh, you can play against constantly uh, over and over again, this is one of those games that um, it really starts, really starts shining after repeated plays, because then it's just like, it's one of those, bam, the game's going on, and you, and you start up and you're playing. It reminds me a lot, actually of um, playing Mastermind with my sister. My sister and I used to play Mastermind all the time on camping trips and things like that. And uh, she's coming to town. Uh, my niece is getting married very soon, and I'm going to make her play this game with me because uh, I think we'll have a hoot while we play it. So uh, there you go, man. Uh, Codename Oracle. Uh, like I said, I'm not a big two-player game fan, but uh, this game is, is awesome. And I've been finding more and more two-player games that I really, really like lately. I don't know what the deal is with that. I, I guess... Um, Maybe I'm having a renaissance for this genre, if you will. Uh, I always say, uh, if, if I try to give you a hint as far as um, uh, what, uh, what, 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 what kind of games, uh, or what, what type of gamer uh, this game will fit, uh, you, you have to um, really enjoy uh, uh, like memory and logic puzzles. And you have to basically have one uh, opponent. You can't have like two or three people constantly at your doorway to play games because this is a game that is only for two people. But um, if you're a fan of deduction games, if you're a fan of logic games, um, I think this will fit your game shelf quite nicely, and you'll enjoy the heck each time, heck out of it each time you, you, it hits the table for you. So there you go. Uh, Codename Oracle, Wishing True Games. Uh, it should be in Kickstarter right now. Uh, I'll have the link below the video. Go ahead and check that out and see if it's something you want to back and uh, play and get and what have you. <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, uh, this is Undead Viking. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this review. I very much appreciate your time. Um, yeah, and then I guess I'll just see you uh, once I publish uh, the next video. Until then, you have yourself an awesome day. All right, bye-bye now.